Some people argue that since we have a capable civil service to keep things working, Singapore is already in good hands. Hence, we need not be so stringent in our expectations of political leaders. Expectations of capability, of mastery of their portfolios, of the experience they bring to the job. And we can even survive a bad election or a bad government because the civil service is there. But I believe this is totally misguided. Leadership does matter, and political leaders play a specific vital role in any country, but especially in our system of government. First, ministers are responsible for getting the politics right, just as the civil service is primarily responsible for policy. Ministers have to win the people's mandate, sense the public mood, set the strategic direction for the country, and persuade the public on this direction and on the policies to get there, including unpopular ones. Policies always exist within a political context. They do not happen in a vacuum. If the country's politics is divided and fractious, or if political leaders are well-meaning but mediocre, a competent civil service may be able to keep the country going on autopilot for some time. But the civil service, under these circumstances, cannot launch major policy initiatives, set new directions, or mobilize the population to mount a national response to major challenges. You see this in many other governments, like the United Kingdom or Hong Kong, or even in the US, where urgent actions that everyone agrees is necessary, non-partisan actions, like upgrading the country's aging infrastructure, cannot be taken because of deep political divisions. In Singapore, the public service has been effective precisely because we have the political climate and political leaders who support and enable the public service to operate in a rational, efficient, and systematic way. We have the luxury of looking beyond the short term, identifying future opportunities, and solving longer-term problems like climate change, with full confidence that we can fund and carry out the plans. We have the wherewithal to build up and restructure our organizations to deal with these problems and opportunities. We have committed the political capital to bring in the talent we need and to pay them properly. We can sustain organizations like the Masse and GIC. They are deliberately created as companies rather than government departments to afford them a greater degree of autonomy. They are insulated from political pressures and bureaucratic interference to give them the space to make sound investment decisions. And it works, not only because we have the right organisational structure, but because we have the political will to do things the right way and see things through. And we have built up the right culture and values in the civil service. So officers appointed know their role and know what is the right thing for them to do. This arrangement has enabled us to steward and to build, our, build up our reserves and has greatly benefited our people. It is an arrangement unique to Singapore. It puzzles others studying us. They come, they look, they watch our, they see our org charts, they ask many questions Eventually, they may understand how we make it work, but they will have great difficulty doing the same in a different political environment. But in Singapore, all this is possible, and it is possible only because of the stable, well-functioning political system that we have created, inherited, and maintained. Secondly, just as public service leaders must understand the political context, ministers on their part must master their ministries and the policies they are accountable for. Ministers must have their hearts in the right place with a passion to serve and a concern for the welfare of the people. That's 
sine qua non, taken for granted. But a minister is not a non-executive chairman who just provides strategic guidance to his ministry or PERMSEC. In Singapore, ministers are expected to be hands-on executive leaders. They are intimately involved in developing policies, exploring alternatives, proposing solutions, and making the final decisions. And this is true not just of the specific minister in charge of a particular portfolio, but of the whole cabinet too when it comes to a major policy decision put up by one of the ministries. This is how we have done it, whether it is upgrading train reliability, designing medical services for the elderly, building up digital government and a smart nation, or managing sensitive foreign relations. Ultimately, even if ministers are diligent and well-intentioned, if they are not quite up to the mark or unable to play their roles properly, the public service cannot function well. Decisions will be delayed or fudged, wrong decisions will be taken, officers will be unable to get things done, they will try to find roundabout ways to get around the direct command structure. Enterprising and idealistic officers will become frustrated and disillusioned. Some will leave, making things worse. Maintaining an outstanding public service will itself be in jeopardy. The quality of government will go down and it will, be, it will take years to recover if that is at all possible. Thankfully, our system has worked quite well so far. But we must continue to get capable, committed people to enter politics, to hold political appointments, to maintain the quality of ministers, the political leadership, to be up to their responsibilities to lead and to work with the public service. That is vital to maintaining the quality of government that Singaporeans have become used to. The relationship between the political leadership and the public service, which is non-political, is a crucial but a delicate one. We have not go gone down the route of the United Kingdom or of Australia. These countries have brought in political advisors and appointees to do the work that their apolitical civil servants do not want to do or cannot be trusted to do or, or are not to do because they have drawn the line sharply between the ministers and the civil service. Boris Johnson's chief advisor is Dominic Cummings. He is a political appointee himself and he has made it clear that he believes that the UK civil service is subverting his government and Brexit. He has publicly lambasted the civil service as dysfunctional and incompetent and vowed to turn things upside down. His harsh criticism is perhaps not totally baseless. The UK civil service has a reputation for knowing their jobs, but also for being bureaucratic and insufficiently responsive to political direction. Yes, Minister was an excellent parody. Still good one generation after the movie, the books were written and the movies were made. But it was an excellent parody because it was plausible enough to strike a chord. But the split between the political and public service leadership has not produced happy results. The civil service under, is undermined and the policy making process fails to deliver results for the nation. In Singapore, Public service leaders must not become involved in political activities. In fact, the minister's job is to insulate the public service officials from political interference and to enable them to carry out their duties without fear or favour when a matter could become politically controversial. But the public service has to be fundamentally aligned with the elected government. Public service leaders must be sensitive to the political context and must share the fundamental values and priorities of the political leadership. Senior public service leaders must work extremely closely with the elected leaders. Only then can the political leaders and the public service together give effect to the will of the people, deliver on the expectations and aspirations of Singaporeans 
and do what is best for Singapore. It is a fine balance for the public service to be neutral and non-political, insulated from the hurly-burly of party politics, and yet politically sensitive and responsive to the nation's priorities and aspirations. But this is inherent in the role of a public sector leader. In the next few years, Singapore will see a transition of political leadership. The 4G leaders will work in a different style. Younger Singaporeans want to be part of the solution. They want the government to deliver policies with them and not just for them. The 4G leaders are working on the SG Together movement to co-create policies with Singaporeans and the public service is supporting this effort. This is a good platform for the 4G leaders to establish their own standing and bonds with Singaporeans and also with the public service. But one thing cannot change. The fundamental alignment, the close working relationship and the mutual trust between ministers and civil servants. I'm confident that the 4G political leaders and the public service leadership, particularly at senior levels, share the same fundamental values, which include meritocracy, clean government, multiracialism, inclusive development and economic growth, amongst others. And also the conviction that an outstanding government is a vital differentiator for Singapore and that Singapore has to be exceptional to thrive. I hope these values will endure beyond the next political generation and continue to be upheld by successive generations of political leaders in Singapore. 